What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Trey Jones. Today we're gonna to be talking about 20 signs that you are recovering from anxiety. Yes, some positivity, some hope, some good news, okay? Smash the like button down below if you're ready to kick anxiety in the butt. Leave me a comment, let me know if you show any of these signs. Let's spread the good news, right? Let's spread the hope, okay? And I'm a perfect example of this. I was down in the dumps, I was at my rock bottom, and I finally started to climb out of that darkness. It took me a while. I wasn't doing everything that I teach on this channel in the beginning of my recovery, but it did start with acceptance and realizing, look, I have to be consistent. So as time went on, I put this game plan together. It's a strategy that I actually coach you know, to my clients. That email is down below in the description if you're ever interested in doing coaching with me because guys, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a living, walking testimony that you can overcome this if you put a good game plan together, if you're patient, um, you know, and if you're consistent. That's really what it comes down to, patience, consistency, and strategy, and I provide all of that. Um, also, down below in the description, there's some other stuff. Check that out, resources, online therapy. You need to be proactive towards your anxiety to get to recovery, so my tips and everything like that are down below, so be sure to give that a look during or after the video, preferably probably after the video. So guys, number 20 of the 20 signs you're recovering is my favorite sign, so make sure that you stick around for the whole video for that. And for those of you that stick around, I'm gonna be giving out a bonus sign that you are recovering from anxiety. That's right, I said it, a bonus sign. So stick around for that. So the first one that I have on the list, you're having many more good days. Now good to somebody may not be good to this guy over here. All right. Now, for me personally, having a good day was, you know, I had a few symptoms here and there, but I was able to just go on about my business. I was able to live my life. Um, th at this point, those symptoms were easy to ignore. Obviously, in the beginning, when they're new, they're fresh, they're hard to ignore. But over time, when you start to accept more, right, you start to develop that internal reassurance that you're okay and that's good enough for you versus the external reassurance, you're able to talk yourself down the symptoms will kind of dull over time. So a dull symptom day was a good day for me. But of course, I started having days where I didn't have any symptoms. I didn't have any panic attacks. Uh, so when you start having some good days, especially if you can string one, two, three, four together, hell, some of you are, are having a good two weeks, three weeks. That's for those of you that are getting more advanced in your recovery. That's a great sign that you're on your way to well, recovery. Number two, you are not sweating the small stuff. Now, this is very important. Something else that I teach my coaching clients, you need to learn to let go of the tiny things. Now, what's tiny to you? I don't know. Uh, for me, I guess stubbing my toe, being five minutes late for work, um, turning on the shower and it's actually freezing cold instead of hot, something small like that. You have to learn to let those things go, all right? This is like unnecessary, ridiculous luggage that you're carrying around. And plus, if your mind is consumed with all these small little things that are happening to you that are not important, how are you gonna handle the bigger problems in your life? How are you gonna handle the bigger stressors that you have, right? And we're trying to resolve everything. So my philosophy is don't sweat the small stuff. Let those things go so you can tackle the bigger problems that you have. But once you get to that, guys, uh, it seems like things are turning around for you. You're not letting the small things get to you and you very well could be on your way to recovery. Number three, you're smiling more. And the, the biggest thing about it is it's not forced. There's nothing worse than having to put a fake smile on, you know, because everybody else is having a good time, but you're over here dealing with your anxiety, your symptoms, your negative thoughts, and you just feel obligated to kind of smile or chuckle or laugh. I did a lot of that, a lot of fake smiling, a lot of fake laughing. Uh, and I've always been that kind of person, even since I was younger. If I wasn't in a great mood, I, I still felt like some weird obligation to make other people laugh or happy around me. Um, but it wasn't real. It was honestly fake. But whenever I'm actually smiling, you know, and I'm having a real good time, it means that I probably am happier. I'm in a better place. So if you're smiling more and you're actually meaning it, it means that your soul's happy. It means that your subconscious is happier. It means that things are going in the right direction and you could be recovering, okay? And of course, this will continue to increase. Now, number four, you are developing healthy habits. That means that you're actually sticking with something long enough to develop a habit. This means that you're understanding how important it is. That means that you're probably seeing some results which could lean towards recovery, okay? So developing healthy habits like working out, okay? Like uh, having a healthy diet doing your mindfulness every single day, um, journaling. These are all healthy habits, positive thinking, countering your negative thoughts, right? Gratitude, practicing gratitude every single day. Doing those things every day, what do they say? It's like 28 to 30 days, right, to create a habit, give or take, and I know everybody's different. You, it could take you 14 days to create a new habit. Well, somebody over here, it takes 60, but 
those are the numbers that were given. So for the sake of this conversation, we'll go with like 28 or 30 days. That's a long time, okay? In the beginning, it's tough, right? You're doing these things. Ah, I don't want to work out. You know, I'm sore and I don't want to get up tomorrow. It's just hard. It's like you get a lot of resistance from your subconscious. But over time, it gets easier and easier. It's second nature and you actually feel weird when you're not working out. You feel weird when you're not eating right, okay? So that whenever you start developing those healthy habits, it seems to tie everything else together. It also means that you're committed and you're willing to work. So good job if you're there. Number five, your panic or anxiety attacks happen less often. This was a huge thing for me. I had, you know, tons of panic attacks every single day. You know, some days I was having three, some days I was having 10, okay? So just for me to get it down to one panic attack a day was a big deal. But then whenever I had a day without a panic attack, I was like, holy crap, I'm on to something. Now, some of your anxiety, guys, is not this bad. I mean, some of you guys, excuse me, don't have anxiety as bad as I had it. Um, which should give you even more hope that recovery is possible because it was a freaking nightmare every single day I was like in fight or flight all day um, But whenever I was able to get a few days without panic, I was like, hmm, I'm on to something and I tried to build on that Okay So if your your panic or your anxiety is happening less often whether that be in a day or if you're not having You know as many in, in a week then that means that something good is happening explore that look into that more uh, Be consistent with what's working and get rid of, a, of what isn't Number six, your panic or anxiety attacks are less intense and they don't last as long. This is another big thing. It's way better for me to have a three to five minute panic attack or even 10 minutes versus hours because I had a lot of panic attacks, especially in the beginning, that would last three to six hours. By the time I'm done panicking, I'm completely exhausted. My muscles are tense for weeks after that. Um, I'm mentally exhausted, physically exhausted. I'm drained and I crash. Okay, and this was happening all the freaking time. So whenever I actually put some tools into action and some of the things that I teach to my clients, I was able to get my panic attacks down to just a few minutes. And that saved me a lot of my day. You know, imagine spending two or three hours less a day in panic and that you build on that. A lot of this is a momentum thing. So whenever they weren't as intense or they didn't last long, I was able to nip them in the butt. I knew I was on to something. And then, you know, shortly after that, recovery seemed a lot more possible. Number seven, you are not Googling anymore. That means that you are done with that. You realize how bad it is. You realize how negative it is. You realize how much trouble it gets you in. And the fact that you're not Googling anymore, especially, and I'm talking about Googling symptoms, guys, if you're wondering, this is especially for my health anxiety people. Um, you're not setting yourself up in the future for failure. You know what I mean? Because you Google, maybe you find out some information on this disease. You're like, well, my symptoms don't line up with that. But now you have it stored up here like, oh, you know, you're basically setting yourself up for failure by learning about new diseases and other symptoms. So if your symptoms just happen to change like they do uh, pretty often in most people, you're going to be like, ah, yeah, I remembered that. That was a sign of like liver cancer. Oh my God, I'm dying. And you just go right back down that road. But by cutting out Googling, your percentage, your chance, you know, your overall chance or percentage of recovering goes up significantly. So get rid of Googling. That's one of the first things you have to stop doing. And some of you are still doing that every single day. Okay. Number eight, you're not checking your vitals. This is something else. This is a form of external reassurance. I had major problems with this. I said this in the video yesterday or two days ago. I was always like this, checking my heart rate. I was always checking my blood pressure, running to Walgreens or a Walmart to use their machine. You know, I was always looking over my body. We're going to get to that one next. But checking my vitals was just this huge chain that was just holding me back. And I had the key the whole time. I had the choice to check my vitals, just like you do. If you're watching this and you check your vitals every day, you're not going to recover if you keep doing that. Unless a doctor instructed you to do that because you have a pre-existing issue, you should not be doing it. If you want to, you know, really drive home to your subconscious that you're fine, that you're healthy, that you're moving on, you, des you know, deserve recovery, you have to stop sending it mixed signals by checking your vitals all day long. And likelihood is it's just going to be triggering. You're not going to be happy with what you see. If you have anxiety, your heart rate's going to probably be high. Your blood pressure is going to be high. I eventually just had to accept that and stop checking because it was extremely triggering. It wasn't healthy for me. So stop checking your vitals. But if you're not doing that anymore, you realize the importance you're probably going to get somewhere and recovery seems a little bit more possible. Number nine, you are not always self-examining. It kind of falls under the category of the vital thing. It's just a little bit different. Stop looking over your body every single day. You know, if this is something that you did religiously, like some of my clients have explained to me, they're doing this all freaking day looking for lumps, bumps, rashes, anything, even like dry skin, looking at their veins. You're going to find something if you look hard enough. And if you have health anxiety, especially your eyes are going to start playing tricks on you. 
and you're gonna make something out of nothing, okay? So stop looking over your body. Those of you that have moved away from that, again, you're just setting yourself up uh, for a brighter future and you could probably recover faster. Number nine, uh, excuse me, number 10, you are not asking for testing anymore. Again, this kind of goes towards my health anxiety people, right? We're in the doctors all the time. We're asking for this test. We're asking for that test. Now that you are getting away from that, you realize that I need to accept anxiety. You're probably getting closer to acceptance. Therefore, you're probably starting to enter recovery if you know, you're know you not for, you know, further advanced into it. So make sure that you're not asking for testing anymore. Get your initial reassurance. Once they tell you to stop coming back, you got to stop coming back, okay? Um, because it just gets to a point to where it's not healthy. Some of you are getting tests over and over and over. And I was there. I, I got EKGs all the time. Um, blood work done all the time, constant ER, hospital doctor, uh, doctor's office visits. Eventually, I had to cut that out of my life and start telling myself, look, I don't need this test. I'm healthy. I'm fine. I just have anxiety, and anxiety is what's actually causing all of these symptoms. The next one, number 11, brings me to this one, kind of ties in with that. You are not in the hospital or the ER or doctor's office anymore. Like I said, I was going to one of these three all the time at all hours, um, especially, of course, you know, the ER, the hospital. I was going there late at night. I would even spend the night sometimes in the parking lot just in case I was going to have a heart attack. Um, once you're not going to those things anymore, you, you're starting to realize that you're, you know, you need to accept anxiety or you've already accepted anxiety and um, that's going to get you that much closer to recovery. Number 12, you aren't asking friends and family for constant reassurance. This is also something that I did on the regular, asking my friends, like, do you have this symptom? You know, huh? What do you think it is? You know, asking my family, my mom, she was a nurse. I've told you guys this in many videos. I was always calling her, asking for reassurance. Am I going to be okay? Is this this? Is it that? Do you think I have a heart problem? Do you think they're misdiagnosing me? Bless her heart, I called her at all hours. Um, every day of the week, pretty much, if I was having a panic attack, that, that's who I was on the phone with. Eventually, I had to cut her off as far as being uh, my external reassurance. And guys, external reassurance like that, just like checking your vitals or going to the doctor all the time, it's only holding you back because what you need, and I'm going to keep saying this until you guys get it, I want you to tattoo it on your brain. You need internal reassurance. You have to tell yourself that you're okay and that'd be good enough. I couldn't keep relying on my mom. As long as I was calling her up, I wasn't gonna get better. I wasn't gonna recover, okay? So you gotta, you gotta cut that stuff off. Number 13, your symptoms don't last as long anymore, okay? So you're having constant symptoms. You're, usually these symptoms are on autopilot, especially if you've had anxiety for a long time. Like you don't need you know, to be stressed consciously to have symptoms. Your subconscious can just consistently put these out. And usually it's because you feared these symptoms for a very long time. Like for me in the beginning, my chest pain was all the time, but whenever I started getting better and I started getting closer to recovery, I rarely had chest pain. Uh, it didn't last very long. Even if it came up, I was able to nip it in the butt. So that means that you're getting closer um, to recovery. Number 14, your symptoms aren't as intense as they used to be. So they're not, and I say intense, it's funny. Most of our uh, symptoms of anxiety are actually caused by muscle tension. So they're not as intense as they used to be. Things aren't as tight as they used to be. Things are not as painful as they used to be. This could be because your overall anxiety is going down or you've just gotten so used to actually nipping these symptoms in the butt when they pop up so the tension can't get more severe. So I always tell my clients three to five seconds, that's how fast you need to be responding to symptoms or negative thoughts because if you wait 20, 30 minutes to address your chest pain, it's so tight already, it's gonna probably remain there for quite a bit. Let's see where I'm at. Um, number 15, guys. You don't have symptoms every day, just like with the panic attack thing. Once I was able to cut a few of my panic attacks out, I started to feel better, but I still was having symptoms every single day. Whenever all of your panic is gone and all of your anxiety uh, attacks are gone, you probably still will have symptoms that linger, but then whenever you actually start seeing some days where there's not even any symptoms at all, that's a good sign, okay? And like I said, you start stringing one, two, three, four of those together, and it just escalates from there. And guys, I'm just gonna, this is like an extra, extra bonus tip, aside from the one I'm gonna give at the end of this video. When you have a good day, be super thankful and, and show a lot of gratitude and be extremely overjoyous and be happy, be extreme about it. Be so happy that you have a good day instead of wondering when the symptoms are gonna come back because we sabotage ourselves doing that, a lot of anticipatory anxiety there. And sometimes you'd be surprised, your subconscious can reward you with another day, you know, if it, if it feels like, you're very appreciative of the good day that you're having today. So be present that day, be in the moment. You know, we always complain like, it's hard to be present when I have all these symptoms. Well, when you have a good freaking day, 
practice being present. Be happy. Be, you know, be thankful. Get out and do something. Don't just sit around waiting for the symptoms to come back like I did all the time. <laughs> a lot of these things, whenever I, it seems like I'm talking at you, I'm just telling you things that I did, okay? I needed somebody to tell me these things. Um, number 16, okay? Old passions and hobbies are coming back. I don't know if you're like me, but whenever my anxiety was really intense, I stopped doing the things that I like to do. So whenever I was coming around during my recovery, you know, I started getting back to things that I loved, getting back to my roots, right? I, I don't like to say getting back to the old me because the old me is what got me here, but some of the positive things in my older life before the anxiety disorder took over, I was able to get back to and enjoy again. So that's a good sign, guys, if you're getting back to your old passions, your hobbies, whatever craft you have. Number 17, Others are noticing you seem happier, okay? At first, you notice, right? Like, you notice you're smiling more and you're not having to force a smile, but then later, it's even, it's even greater when somebody else is coming up to you, like, you've been in a good mood lately. Hmm. It's weird. Like, usually ask me about all these symptoms. I remember uh, with my mom, this is whenever I first noticed it was a little bit different. It wasn't like, oh, you're smiling more. It's like, you don't really call me that much anymore. Hmm, I guess you're you're feeling a little bit better, you know, and that was really funny. You know, I kind of laughed it off, but it's true. Like I, you know, people will start to notice that you're changing, especially people that are closest to you. And that's very encouraging. Not only does it show that you're getting closer to recovery, right, or that you're getting better, seeing at least some improvement. It's just encouraging that people notice it, right? We want people to be on our team, on our side. Um, so it's good to always hear, you know, people, you know, noticing our happiness. However, I wouldn't, would want to word that. Number 18, you have developed your internal voice for self-love uh, and reassurance, which means instead of now when you have symptoms or panic, you freak out, right, immediately or you spiral, you are quick to get in there and be like, calm down, things are okay, you know, I'm, I'm healthy, there's nothing wrong, especially for my health anxiety folks out there. Like, I've been checked a million times, professionals have checked me, disease is progressive, I would have died by now, I'm not having another heart attack, I'm 20 years old, you know, things are okay, I have anxiety, I have a track record for this. Whenever you're able to develop that inner voice and you start using it more effectively, that means that you're catching on. Um, and I'm just saying, like, this was in full force towards the end of my recovery. It's really what drove it home, I think, for me. It was a lot of self-love, me being there for my subconscious when it needed it. Because honestly, in the beginning, whenever things weren't going good in your life, your subconscious needed you to say things are going to be okay. And those of us that just ignored our subconscious or didn't tell ourselves that things are going to be good, we're the ones who deal with anxiety later, right? Too many unresolved things go, uh, go without being resolved, obviously, and then it builds up and then we have an anxiety disorder. And that's what happened to me. Um, the next one, guys, number 19. You have stopped avoiding things um, or life in general. A lot of you aren't even leaving your bed. A lot of you aren't leaving the room. A lot of you aren't leaving the house. Um, for me, I wasn't necessarily agoraphobic. I had some agoraphobic, I guess, behavior or tendencies sometimes. I'd stay inside for a few days. I wasn't necessarily afraid of going outside. Um, but I avoided working at a job long term. I avoided driving, okay? I avoided going to gatherings. I avoided going to a lot of public places because I didn't want to have panic attacks, right? Um, I started to avoid things like, you know, getting on roller coasters, doing things that I used to love to do. So it kind of ties back into some old passions and hobbies that maybe you're avoiding now. Um, so whenever you stop avoiding these things, it's because you come to a realization, I have to live my life anyways. I'm not going to uh, put anything on hold for my anxiety. Like, I know that if I just keep myself from driving, you know, that I'm never going to get over that fear. That means that you're onto something. It means that you're growing stronger and you're refusing to, to basically lose your grip to anxiety, which means you're probably going to recover. That's an excellent sign if you um, are coming across that or if you're starting to do that. Number 20, and this is one of my favorite ones right here, if not the most favorite, you forget you have anxiety sometimes. Like you totally forget. And at the end of my recovery, it was like I'd go a week or two without thinking about anxiety, you know, or this means that you're not having a lot of symptoms anymore. You're not having as many negative thoughts anymore. You're getting better sleep. You're getting back to life. You're busy. You're distracted sometimes. Like you will literally start to forget that you have anxiety while some of you right now, it's like in the forefront of your mind all day. Like it's, it's always there. Um, but when things start to get better, you actually start to forget. 
And at the end of anxiety, I always tell everybody what recovery looks like. They always ask me, well, how do you know if you're really fully recovered? Like one day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be like, holy crap, it's been like six months since I've experienced any anxiety. It's like, it, and that's why I tell people don't force recovery because kind of by like every day, be like, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Like you're like, it's like you're staying in anxiety. Uh, but you want to be natural, you know, you want this whole thing to be natural. It's a new life, a new way of living, new habits, new routines. And once you've done it for so long, it becomes a part of who you are. And it's almost like you just totally forget one day that you had anxiety. And that's how it was for me at the end. Like it, I, I remember it was just like a few months where I was like, hmm, I haven't had an attack. I haven't had any symptoms. You know, maybe I'm fully recovered. And I didn't know at the time I was 100% recovered. Um, but now, of course, I know that I was 100% recovered. It's been years and years. Um, and for the bonus one, for you guys that stuck around, your perception of anxiety has changed. You no longer look at anxiety as a nightmare, okay? And that was something that I did forever. This is horrible. This is a nightmare. I'm never going to be able to get over this. Uh, why me? Poor pitiful me. Um, you know, maybe this will just go away one day. Or I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I didn't have any hope. Um, I just thought it was the worst thing in the world. I know many of you probably agree, like this is the worst thing in the world. You have to change your perception, your perspective on anxiety. I had to start looking at anxiety, and you've probably heard me say this a few times. Uh, I had to look at anxiety as a sign that I needed to grow. Like obviously my subconscious needed growth. I needed to grow as a person. I needed to change my life. And if I don't change my life, I'm gonna keep feeling this way. So that's a positive way of looking at anxiety. I tell people to look at anxiety as an opportunity. Anxiety is now an opportunity for me to grow, okay? It's that kick in the butt that I needed to change my life so I'd have a higher quality life. This is a growth period. And whenever you're needing to grow, like you're gonna have to go through a period of time where you're uncomfortable. And again, the reason you're having these symptoms is because you're, this is the only way your subconscious really knows how to communicate with you, okay? So I had to change my perception on anxiety. I had to stop looking at it as the end of the world and start looking at it in a positive way. Like, look, I'm gonna be such a better person after this. I'm gonna be stronger in every aspect of my life, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. That excites me. And that's what happens. You start getting excited about recovery. So then you start sticking with your mindfulness. You start getting up earlier. Um, it's easier for you to be more positive when you're excited about the outcome. Um, this, this just really changed my, my whole view on anxiety. And I encourage you guys to try to get there as quickly as you can. Because as long as you look at this as a chore, whether it be your strategy or whatever, the things you have to do to get over anxiety, as long as you look at anxiety as this horrible monster, um, that fear and that attitude is literally what's feeding it to begin with, okay? So we have to get past that. You have to change the way that you look at it and things get a lot better from there. But guys, I hope you enjoyed those. That's a total of 21 uh, signs that you are recovering from anxiety. Um, and again, if you have shown a few of these and you're, uh, I guess, in whatever stage you are with your anxiety, it's a good sign, okay? Build off of that. Some of you are, are showing more signs than others, obviously. It depends on where you're at with your recovery. Um, but share down below. You know, we always talk about the negatives, right? Like, I'm dealing with this symptom. I'm dealing with that. But... I don't see a lot of people, and occasionally we have some people that'll comment and be like, hey, I'm doing this or I'm doing that, but most of the time it's just all negative, you know? Let's start posting the positive things. Like if you're showing one of these signs, put it down below, share it with everybody. Let everybody know uh, that you're doing good, you know, that that's contagious sometimes. But anyways, that little rant's over. I just want you guys to try to be more positive. I know it's hard when you have the symptoms and stuff and panic, but, uh, it's really a key to recovery in general. You know, that's kind of broad. Like, you got to be positive. We hear it, but it's for real. You got to practice being positive. And just sharing something that, uh, you know, was positive in your life in the comment section is practicing being positive and you're sharing it with other people. So I just think it helps. Um, again, guys, in the description, lots of things going on down there. If you want to do coaching with me, I love it. It's fulfilling. Um, just send me an email. You know, I got so many people right now that are improving. Uh, some people that have actually claimed to recover after doing coaching with me. So it's been an amazing ride so far. I love doing it. I think I'm coming up on a year uh, now since I started. Actually, it's, it's now like a year and a few days since I actually started doing coaching. So now I'm starting to become a little bit weathered, you know, right? Like I'm becoming a veteran. So it's been fun. I've learned a lot from doing it as well. 
Um, and I'd love for you to be a part of that. It supports me as well. So if you ever want to support me, uh, going through coaching is an excellent way to do that. And you get something out of it as well, of course. Um, and online therapy, guys, try that out if you haven't. I'm going to keep on saying it because it's a great opportunity. Um, it's a two-week free trial, so there's no reason not to try it out, right? Um, some of you don't like therapy. I get that. Uh, some of you haven't tried, so don't knock it till you try it. So uh, that link is down below. There's three Facebook groups down there. Be sure to join those if you haven't. Um, there's one for health anxiety, one for tips and recovery, which is just a positive Facebook group. Um, we don't allow negativity or symptom talk there. So speaking about recovery, if you feel like you're in recovery, that's the perfect group to join. And then we have the large Facebook group, which is more of a support group. There's over 100,000 members in there. Um, so if you want some reassurance, some help with symptoms and things like that, there's still some positivity, of course, in that group and people share some good stuff. Um, you can join that community as well. I, I urge you to do that. All my social media is down below, guys. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to be more consistent. Um, you know, I, I want to do videos every day. And like I said in the last video, I'm thinking about upping it to two videos a day. We'll just have to see how that goes. I'm really wanting to think hard on that before I, I do it because um, it has its goods and it has its bads. Who says it has its goods and bad? It has its advantages and disadvantages. I'm, I'm being really weird today with my words, so bear with me. Sometimes I do this, especially on longer videos. Um, but like this video if you got value. Remember, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't. If you're new here and you've been patient and you've watched this whole thing, thank you. Just subscribe for more and hit the bell so you get updates whenever I put these videos out. Um, if you watch this whole video, trying to think of something funny to say so it'll throw everybody off in the comments put like panda express comment panda express if you watch this whole video okay we're up to almost 27 minutes thank you guys for watching and supporting me for the likes the comments the subscribers the subscriptions guys thank you so much i love you all and until next time keep fighting